week six of the fantasy football season and here's tight end start sits every matchup this week first one thursday night football denver broncos at the kansas city chiefs so adam Trabman, we haven't seen much out of him this season pretty much it's been inconsistent in the passing game one week it's sutton some weeks it's judy and then some weeks it's the running backs like mclaughlin and p ryan out of the backfield last week so right now Trabman not getting many targets not making many plays i know he so showed some flashes this season but he's a sit. Travis Kelsey looks like he's going to play in this game, which is a good sign. But I feel like one more lower leg problem here. He could be out for the season the way things have gone down so far. Before week one's game of practice, hyper extended the knee. And then last week planted that foot and came down awkwardly. But he came back into the game and toughed it out. So this week here with a good matchup versus the Denver Broncos. That don't stop anyone. And he's the best tight end, obviously, in fantasy football. He's a start now. Ravens at the Tennessee Titans. Mark Andrews, I know so far this season, we really haven't seen much out of Andrews besides that week four game where he had two touchdowns. But this week, good matchup versus the Tennessee Titans, which they are good defense versus the run, but they can't stop the passing game. So right now, I think this Baltimore Raven offense has to get back to basics. Lamar dropping back, finding Mark Andrews. And this week here, I think Andrews has a good performance and he's a start. Chiga Kongwo, He's a sit for me in this one. Aquangwa last season, he broke out towards the end of the year for this Tennessee Titan team. But so far this year, we really haven't seen much out of him as well. This offense is inconsistent. Hopkins, he finally had a big ball game for once this year. But besides Hopkins and Derrick Henry, no one really has fantasy appeal. With a bad offensive line that can't block for Tannehill to give him time. And Tannehill accurate and inconsistent. So he's a sit a Congo this week. Carolina Panthers, Miami Dolphins, Hayden Hurst, he's a sit for me this week week one i know he had the big game but this offense as a whole pretty much hasn't done anything this season for fantasy football besides adam thielen who's been one of the better wide receivers surprisingly this year for this carolina panther team and a resurgence year for him after pretty much on a one-year prove it deal but right now hayden hurst not getting the football bryce young he's having problems so far in his rookie season and this offensive line as well isn't good at giving him time to throw so right now with a young quarterback not having time to throw and not really making plays. Hayden Hurst isn't going to have value. Next sits Durham Smythe of the Miami Dolphins. The Smythe, he showed some flashes early in the season, the first two, three weeks. But now the last two weeks, you really haven't seen anything from Smythe. And he had the goose egg last week. And obviously this offense revolves around Tyreek Hill, Tua, with the quick pass game. And Jim and Waddle, they got to get into things a little bit more. I know Devon A. Kane's out for a few weeks. And they'll go with Raheem Mostert and probably Jeff Wilson or Salvin Ahmed. But right now, Durham Smythe is not consistent enough to be a fantasy option. He's a sit. Jawan Johnson and the Saints go to the Houston Texans. Jawan Johnson, he's going to be a sit this week for me. We haven't seen much out of this Saint passing game for the most part. Besides Michael Thomas, have those 10, 12-point games. And Chris Olave, I know he had a couple good games. But nothing out of control like you think you would from Olave, where most people drafted him second, third round. So right now, Johnson, he was better last season with Andy Dalton. But this year with Derek Carr, we haven't seen much. Dalton Schultz, the last two weeks, he's really come on for this Houston Texan team, finding the end zone the last two games in a row. And now he's back on the radar. I know last season had a great year with the Dallas Cowboys. In the first three weeks of this season, he didn't do much. But this week here, I think Dalton Schultz, even in a mediocre matchup versus a pretty stout Saint defense, is a starting option at the tight end position. Now the command is at the Atlanta Falcons. Logan Thomas is a start for me. And Thomas, so health has always been the issue with him. But so far this season, he's played in every game except the one. And last week, he went off with a monster game. And one of the hottest pickups on the waiver wire this week is Thomas. So we know he's a big athletic tight end. 6667 six, six, big red zone target and Sam Howell really likes him targeting him a lot so far in the early going so this week you're on a fast track in Atlanta in a game which could be a mini shootout I like Thomas as a start now to the Falcons both tight ends I actually like as a start for once this week here Kyle Pitts finally had that nice game last week and they got to get Kyle Pitts the ball more this guy can make plays he's got the speed of a wide receiver he can line up anywhere on the formation for this Falcon team and they got to utilize him better and last week we saw it and he had a solid fantasy game obviously with 17 PPR fantasy points so this week he's a start and John o. Smith they're running a lot of two tight end sets is this Atlanta Falcon team so John o. Smith a few seasons ago with the Tennessee Titans he was a top 10 tight end in fantasy points so right now with this two tight end system and John o. Smith he's putting up at least eight or nine fantasy points over the last few weeks he's better than some options so right now i would actually put him in as a start now to the indianapolis colts 
at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Kylan Granton, he's been up and down this season. I know he found the end zone early in the year, but right now they pretty much have three tight ends in the system, and now with Gardner Minshew in there at quarterback, I don't think we're going to see consistent work for a Granton, an Andrew Ogletree, or a Moawi Cox. So all the tight ends on this roster are sit this week. Now to the Jaguars, Evan Ingram and Trevor Lawrence, they got good chemistry good rapport he's getting Evan Ingram the ball in spots and Evan Ingram he's an athletic tight end as well like a Kyle Pitts can line up almost anywhere in the formation he's a nice threat in the middle of the field and things really open up for him with receivers like Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk so this week in a solid matchup and the Jaguars back home Ingram's a start for me now to the Seattle Seahawks at the Bengals Noah Fant he's had some decent ball games so far this season we saw week four he had a good one versus the Giants even though it was a 58 yard play that pretty much made most of his day, but this week at the Cincinnati Bengals, I think he's a borderline option. Is Noah Fant. Have to see a little bit more out of him. And over the last couple weeks, we've seen some tight ends emerge. Where Noah Fant, he'll probably still crack the top 15 of my rankings, but he's not a guy in the top 12 right now. See, he's borderline. Irv Smith Jr. sit for the Cincinnati Bengals. Pretty much the tight end position over there in Cincinnati is non-existent for fantasy football. No one's really getting targets. No one's really making plays. And Joe Burrow in this offense revolves around Jamar Chase, Higgins, Irwin we saw get some work last week with Higgins out, and Tyler Boyd just spreading you out with the wide receivers and making plays that way. Now to the Minnesota Vikings at the Chicago Bears. TJ Hawkinson, he's a top tight end in this league. And now with Justin Jefferson out, I think the numbers are going to go up and the targets are going to go up because you need that big guy in the middle of the field to make plays. And I think TJ Hawkinson, with that factored in, and a great matchup with the Chicago Bears, that can't stop anyone. I think he has a good game. And we just saw Logan Thomas go over 15 PPR fantasy points. So Hawkinson, he's going to be top two or three in the rankings this week for sure. And a start, Cole Komet, a start for me this week. Cole Komet and Justin Fields, we saw flashes last season with these two guys on the same page and going out there and make plays. And right now, Cole Komet, two touchdowns a couple weeks ago. And then last week had a solid fantasy game. So this week, a potential shootout between two division rivals in the Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears. I like Cole Komet once again as a decent fantasy option, and I think he could get anywhere from 8 to 10 fantasy points. And as a start this week now to the San Francisco 49ers at the Cleveland Browns. So right here, George Kittle finally had that breakout game. The first four weeks of the season, we really didn't see much here out of Kittle besides in week three versus the New York Giants. We had seven catches for 90 yards, but after last week, a three-touchdown performance carving the Dallas Cowboys up. I think this week here in the dog pound in Cleveland, Kittle goes out there and he has another good game. I'm not saying he's going to go out there and have a hat trick once again, but I think 60, 70 yards and possibly find in the end zone is good. And the start, David Njoku, we haven't seen much out of him this season. The Sean Watson, he possibly might not play in this game, which is also another tough hit for David Njoku. And right now, he's been an inconsistent tight end on and off for many seasons so right here with a tough matchup versus one of the best defenses in the league if not the best defense he's a sit for me this week now patriots vegas raiders hunter henry the first few weeks of the season he was one of the better tight ends in the league but right now this new england patriot team they cannot move the football at all over the last few weeks here so i can't have any confidence i know in some leagues you don't have no choice but to start a hunter henry if there's not many options on your waiver wire or in a deeper league of that. But right now, while Hunter Henry the last few weeks hasn't done much, including a goose egg in last week's ball game versus New Orleans Saints, he's borderline option at best. Michael Meyer, he's a sit this week for me. I know Jimmy Garoppolo going into the Monday Night Football game in week five versus the Packers said this kid's got to be more involved in the offense and he could be a good playmaker. And they traded up in the draft early rounds to get him he's this Las Vegas Raider team but right now Michael Meyer I haven't seen enough out of him to be a guy to go out there and put in your starting lineup definitely a guy to be on the fantasy radar down the line here to see if he could be a breakout candidate but right now he's a sit for me as Meyer now to the Lions at the Tampa Bay Bucks Sam Laporte is taking the lead by storm in his rookie season and he's already a top five tight end easily in terms of targets scoring points finding the end zone and this week here in a good matchup versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I think he can take advantage of their linebackers, make some plays, and he's the number two option in that offense. Obviously, a Sam Laporta behind Amar Ross St. Brown, even though St. Brown right now, he possibly could miss another ball game where there'll just be even more targets here for Sam Laporta. But either way, St. Brown in the lineup or not, Sam Laporta, he's an option each and every week. And like I said, he's working his way up the ladder pretty quick 
in his rookie season, Kate Otten, he's a sit for me. I know Otten, he's had some decent ball games throughout his good career last season in his rookie year. Now this year, he had a couple decent games, but right now not enough, in my opinion, for Kate Otten to be a week-in and week-out fantasy option. So this week in a pretty tough matchup versus stout defense, he's a sit. Now to the Cardinals at the Rams. Zach Ertz, he's been solid this season with eight or more fantasy points in four games a season. So right now, this Ram team, we know they got some weapons on offense where they're going to put points on the board. And this Cardinal team most likely once again will be trailing, especially James Conner out for a few weeks now on injury reserve with the injury. So Zach Ertz, I think, is going to get targets. Him and Hollywood Brown, for the most part, has been a majority of this offense over there in Arizona. And he's a star. Tyler Higby, I'm going to give him a start in this. We know Arizona's defense isn't that great. And Matthew Stafford, he could spread the football out to a lot of good players. Cooper Cup back, opens the field up more. Puka Nakua, one of the better wide receivers already in his rookie season so far. I know it's got to do a lot with scheme, but he's got great hands over there at the wide receiver position. Two to a with a deep threat. So right now, I think the middle of the field will be open. A good matchup. And Higby's been a solid tight end for the last few seasons. He's a star. Now to the Eagles at the New York Jets. Dallas Goddard finally had that patenting and breakout ball game where he had over 100 yards with eight catches, 117 yards in the touchdown. I'm not saying this week versus this good Jet defense he's going to do that, but this New York Jet defense does give up fantasy points at an alarming rate, the third most fantasy points to tight ends on the season. So I think Dallas Goddard, once again, has a good game. I'm not saying 117 yards in the touchdown, but I think 50 yards in the touchdown is a possibility and is a start. Now to the Jets, Tyler Conklin, he's a borderline option for me. I've been saying this a lot in the videos, though. Tyler Conklin, one of the main targets on this Jet offense, I believe, with Zach Wilson, a quarterback behind Gary Wilson, obviously. So he's getting targets. He's putting up fantasy points. And he's still out there in tons of fantasy weeks. So right now, he's a borderline option here for me, Conklin. But if he has another solid week, he's going to be a guy in starting lineups more weeks than not. If he has a good one this week, now to the Giants at the Bills Sunday Night Football. Darren Wall, a lot of people drafted him early, fourth, fifth, sixth round in most fantasy drafts, and the numbers haven't been there week in and week out, and that has to do with the Giants' offensive line not blocking well and giving Daniel Jones at least some time to go and make some throws and plays. But Darren Waller, even in tough matchup, but still the number one option in this offense where they're going to probably have to pass early and often if they're down 10, 14 points to start the game. He's a start for me. And now to the Bills, Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox. None of these guys have been consistent this season where they're going to be week in and week in starts. So right now, where well, the numbers haven't been there, the targets haven't been there. It's been Stefan Diggs and obviously Gabe Davis this year making all the plays pretty much in the passing game. They're both sits for me. For the final game of the week, Dallas Cowboys at the Los Angeles Chargers. Jake Ferguson's been pretty solid so far this season. Last week, it was just a throwaway game as a whole for this Cowboy team where no one did anything on the offense. But this week here versus a mediocre to poor Charger defense, I think Ferguson can find the holes in the middle of the field, work up the middle of the seam. And this Cowboy team, they got to open up this passing game a little bit because they've pretty much been in pedestrian in the passing game most of the season and having trouble in the red zone. So this week here, I think Jake Ferguson's going to be a big part of that. And we know Dak Prescott likes targeting the tight end throughout his NFL career. And now Gerald Everett's a sit for me. We haven't seen enough out of Everett this season. And I know, obviously, Mike Williams is out for the year. But Gerald Everett, still, we got to see more out of him. Be a week in and week out start at the tight end position. So right now, I think Everett could go out there and make plays, no doubt about it. But he's not a guy I really have confidence in this week versus a pretty solid defense, even though last week they did get torched by George Kittle. So that's tight end starts. It's every matchup here in week six of the fantasy football season.